Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Overview of Care Coordination. This is Lecture A, What is Care Coordination? Thank you for taking your valuable time to invest in learning what it means to coordinate care. As you view and learn from this webinar, you will become better navigators to better guide and coordinate care for patients traveling through the complex and often frightening healthcare maze. The objectives for this unit, Overview of Care Coordination, Lecture A, are to define care coordination effectiveness and explain the purposes for care coordination. This unit provides insight into what is known and tested about patient-centered care coordination. We'll learn about care coordination implementation in a variety of care settings and programs from what is being tried, tested, and applied by those already on the care coordination journey. Case examples represent a range of programs and demonstrate care coordination successes. As defined by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, ARC, care coordination involves deliberately organizing patient care activities and sharing information among all of the participants concerned with a patient's care to achieve safer and more effective care. This means that the patient's needs and preferences are known ahead of time and communicated at the right time to the right people and that this information is used to provide safe, appropriate, and effective care to the patient. Care coordination involves deliberately organizing patient care activities, sharing information among all individuals involved in the patient's care, using information to deliver safe, appropriate, and effective care, accounting for the patient's needs and preferences before making decisions, and preparing for care transitions. We can begin with a case example of coordinated care from the Association for Healthcare Quality and Research's Care Coordination Measures Atlas. In this case, Mr. Andrews is a 70-year-old man with congestive heart failure and diabetes. He uses a cane when walking and recently has had some mild memory problems. During a recent meal delivery, the program staffer noticed that Mr. Andrews seemed very ill. He called an ambulance and Mr. Andrews was taken to the emergency department. There, he was diagnosed with a congestive heart failure exacerbation and was admitted. The hospital contacts Mr. Andrews' primary care physician, PCP, who is immediately available to coordinate care. The PCP noted that Mr. Andrews may have had dosing changes after a recent appointment with his cardiologist. In addition, the PCP noted that Mr. Andrews may be missing medication doses because of his forgetfulness. He provided the hospital team with contact information for specialists and asked that a record of Mr. Andrews' hospital stay be sent to his office upon his discharge. Before being released, Mr. Andrews is given instructions and his daughter is informed of next steps so she too can be involved in Mr. Andrews' care coordination. Evidence-based care coordination allows for seamless transitions across the health care continuum in a deliberate effort to improve outcomes and reduce errors and redundancies. Care coordination's purpose is to develop collaborative health partnership relationships, well-structured processes, and integrated health information technology systems to meet patient health care needs when and where the patient needs and desires care. Care coordination can ensure multidisciplinary health teams' optimum collaboration with communication of pertinent health information over time between the healthcare team's discipline settings and patients and their family members when appropriate. The care coordination aim is to provide continuity of care in meeting healthcare plan goals and achieve positive patient health and experience outcomes. Care coordination provides necessary access to personalized clinically documented care continuity information that is coordinated and securely integrated across healthcare systems. 
The Safety Net Medical Home defines care coordination as beginning with the thoughtful identification of key services, providers in the community followed by the deliberate organization of patient care activities between two or more participants involved in a patient's care to facilitate the appropriate delivery of health care services. A team-based approach to care coordination ensures that responsibility and accountability for the patient's care is shared equitably among all participants caring for the patient. Care teams may be comprised of a range of members from different care settings and disciplines, including all of those you see listed here and more. Care teams should always include the patient and their family. As Christine Bechtel from the National Partnership for Women and Children expressed, patients just want doctors to talk to each other. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, more commonly known as HIPAA, the federal law often referred to when discussing requirements for maintaining the privacy and security of protected health information, or PHI. PHI is individually identified health information related to the care of a patient. Administered by the Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Civil Rights, the security rule provides the technical specifications for management of PHI maintained in electronic systems while the privacy rule provides the regulations pertaining to all PHI, whether in paper or electronic systems. What HIPAA does not do is prevent providers and others from sharing individually identified health information, or PHI, to coordinate services for patients. Care coordination facilitated through the use of information technology systems can protect and provide necessary and timely protected or individually identifiable health information. PHI can be measured, analyzed, and used to provide quality and safety improvement in care coordination and healthcare delivery. The current provider may disclose the relevant PHI to prospective recipient providers, such as by using certified EHR technology, or disclosing the PHI using other means. This disclosure is a treatment disclosure in anticipation of future treatment of the patient by the facility and thus may be carried out under 45 CFR 164.506 C2. Additional detail on PHI and care coordination are in Unit 10 of this component. Consider the case example of Julia and Paul and their three children. Julia lost her job six months ago and Paul works part-time. They do not have health coverage, but their children are enrolled in CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program, or Children's Medicaid. Their son John is 12 years old and has severe asthma. He ends up in the emergency room at least once a month. The inhalers the doctor prescribes are expensive. Paul thinks the mold growing in their living room might be exacerbating John's asthma, but he has not been able to get their landlord on the phone to address the problem. The primary care practice that John visits for medical care has adopted comprehensive care coordination. During one of his visits, a care coordinator sits down with John, Julia, and Paul and assesses all of John's health needs to determine if there are any other services that could help John stay healthy and out of the emergency room. The care coordinator with John and his parents reveals the significant psychological, social, and economic factors that might be aggravating John's condition. The care coordinator connects John to a behavioral health specialist to discuss why he might be having trouble sleeping, legal services to address the family's trouble with their landlord, a pharmacist to discuss if there are more affordable pharmaceutical interventions, and a social worker to connect the family with other community benefit programs they qualify for to try to lighten the strain on the family budget. All of these professionals update John's electronic medical record as they make progress assisting the family. 
The pharmacist sees what medication John had been taking and sends a secure message to the physician to ask if a particular, more affordable substitute would work. The behavioral health specialist talks with the social worker about enrolling John in an after-school program in their community that teaches teenagers living with moderate to severe asthma to swim as a form of therapy. The electronic database that stores this information will send reminders to the care coordinator to follow up with John's family and to check on how he is feeling and the progress of these new treatment efforts. The triple aim of care coordination is improving the patient experience of care, improving the health of populations, and reducing per capita costs of health care. Care coordination should be a team and family driven process that improves patient, family, and healthcare practitioner satisfaction, facilitates children and youth access to services, improves healthcare outcomes, and reduces costs associated with healthcare fragmentation which can lead to under and over utilization of care. Whole person care coordination includes comprehensive care, collaborative self-management support, and emphasis on the spectrum of care needs in multiple settings across the care continuum and community, such as preventive, routine, acute, urgent, and emergent care, mental and behavioral health, advice, assistance, education, and support for making changes in health habits, and making all whole person shared decisions and goals. Care coordination is essential for delivering whole person care because this relatively new model requires organizations that have historically not worked together to collaborate. For example, a teen parent may need transportation to both appointments and a parenting education class offered by the community college. In another example, we know that substandard housing with mold or insect infestations can result in health problems. Collecting that data and incorporating it into the information used for care decision making is paramount for whole person care. The American College of Physicians defines the patient-centered medical home as a care delivery model whereby patient treatment is coordinated through their primary care physician to ensure they receive the necessary care when and where they need it in a manner they can understand. When used, patient-centered medical homes use health information technology extensively to be the repository holding information for measurement, target health goal setting, and shared decision-making teams using whole person health information. This picture illustrates how the patient is at the center of the patient-centered medical home team and support efforts. Models for coordinating care for poorly controlled or complex conditions include special needs frail pediatric patients, chronically ill patients, and patients requiring high health care utilization. Older patients with chronic disease need particularly complex care coordination as they often see many specialists and have lengthy medical histories. Ms. H is a 55-year-old grandmother with a 12-year history of type 2 diabetes, complicated by elevated blood pressure and recurrent episodes of major depression. Her primary care practitioner postponed adjusting her hypoglycemic and antihypertensive drug doses until her depression was under better control and referred her to the mental health center. Ms. H primary care physician had previously met with the clinical director of the mental health center. The center's psychiatrist was shown how to log into and use the practice's web-based e-referral system. The referral coordinator worked with Ms. H and the appointment clerk at the mental health center to set up an appointment that week. Ms. H missed her appointment because one of her grandchildren was ill. The e-referral system noted her missed appointment, and the referral coordinator called Ms. H to set up another appointment. When Ms. H saw Dr. P, he had her clinical information in front of him. He adjusted her depression medication, but also found that her blood pressure was elevated. Ms. H also complained of headache and fatigue. Dr. P became alarmed about her blood pressure and headache, and arranged for her to be seen that afternoon by her PCP who adjusted her antihypertensive medications. 
the receptionist referral coordinator, suggested that Ms. H. have her BP checked by the EMTs at the neighborhood fire station every other day, which she did. Ms. H. slowly began to feel less depressed, and her BP slowly came down to target levels with one more medication adjustment. Care coordination comprises variable components across states and systems of care and can be provided by a great range of professional and non-professional staff supported by various payers and forms of payment. Information used in care coordination can come from many different sources, including demographics. This information might include address or education level or race ethnicity. Patient-generated health information is becoming more and more common from the Internet of Things and may include data such as weight, blood pressure, heart rate, or steps taken each day. Clinical documentation notes commonly come from visits or other patient interactions with caregivers. Medication management information comes from medication records, but also may come from pharmacies. Care plans are documents from the care team that include the patient and describe the expected actions to be taken by all. There are many other sources of information. Health information technology in its many different forms can be used to both collect these different data types and then turn them into information for use in decision making. Care coordination system essentials include the use of patient health information and technology systems to support care coordination that is standard and consistent. Health information technology system capabilities should be well aligned with the clinician's priorities. Care coordination should include interoperable systems to share information. Adequate financial support and HIT workforce expertise is necessary to sustain care coordination systems. Care coordination requires collaboration. This may include meeting with stakeholders to develop an understanding of roles and responsibilities to guide patients beyond the practice setting through cooperative alliances with essential health care services that meet a complete range of needs for a given patient population. Additionally, caregivers may need to develop a standardized approach to care supporting the needed collaboration, coordination, and communication. This concludes Lecture A, What is Care Coordination, of Unit 1, Overview of Care Coordination. In summary, care coordination requires collaboration and communication between the primary care physician team leader, care team, and the patient. Care coordination is successful when the right information is available, supported by health IT systems, for decision making.